Dear Confirmation students, how are you? Pastor Chris Johnson coming to you today. Today is September 23rd, 2020, and I am making this video for our Dear Confirmation students and their instruction in the faith. Um, and the big title for today's lesson is Easter Always, and I'll be unpacking what that means uh, because there's a different a number of different levels we need to understand how Easter is always with us. Easter is always a part of who we are as the redeemed and forgiven and beloved people of God. Now, by way of reminder, a couple weeks ago, we started off the confirmation year by talking about holy time. And that plays into today because um, in the when we think about Easter, this is the, the holiest time in the world, right? Um, the holiest time that has ever happened in the world was when Jesus rose from the dead because dead people are supposed to stay dead but jesus christ didn't stay dead and that is the great joy and the pinnacle of our faith that jesus christ truly rose from the grave and now lives and rules and reigns eternally at the right hand of the father the disciples and others really saw him die the disciples and a number of others really saw him rise again um, they didn't see him rise in the tomb, but they saw the tomb empty, and they also saw Jesus in his resurrected glory, his hands full of holes and, and, and everything. And so this moment has changed the course of human history because the world has not been the same since the dead man, Jesus, rose from the grave. And of course, the dead man, Jesus, is God in the flesh. He is fully God and he is fully man. And the great promise that he gives to us is we can find in a number of places but one important promise is Matthew 28 where Jesus says I'll be with you always until the end of the age and so we talked about holy time and and how God invades our time and and God is really good at doing that and God continues to invade our time on a daily basis on a weekly basis and, and that's what Easter always is all about because God enters our lives to remind us to encourage us uh, to let us know that he is our God, that all will be well, and that he has won the final battle. And so Easter always is remembering that Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and that makes all the difference in our lives. Um, now, this is tied to the idea of the eighth day. Remember we talked about the eighth day a couple weeks ago? Uh, in the Bible, the eighth day is the day of the new creation. And so Easter is, is the day of the new creation where Jesus rose from the grave. And that new day continues on in, in to today. It, it has reverberated throughout human history and it impacts us here and now. Um, and so it impacts us here and now in regards to our baptism. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And it impacts us here and now in regards to the gathering of God's people on Sunday. Now, uh, in the life of the church, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, not on one day, but through a whole entire season of the church year, the season of Easter. Um, Easter, of course, usually falls somewhere in early April to, to late April, and it's the moment where we commemorate the time that God defeated death in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, but did you know, dear Confirmation students, that every Sunday is, is kind of a mini Easter um, because we celebrate God's ongoing presence in our lives. The, the crucified and risen one is with us always, as he has promised. Um, he is with us always in the supper, where he gives us his body and blood to eat and drink. He is with us as we hear his word being preached in, in, the, in the sermon. He is with us as we bring our prayers to him in confidence that God will hear us as he has promised. And so Easter is always with us, and we can bank on that fact, especially at certain moments during the week, like on Sunday morning or Saturday night, if you go to, to Saturday night worship here at Zion. Um, but Easter is always with us by virtue of Jesus being risen from the grave. That's the, that's the big, big, big deal for, for us as Christians. And we can't underestimate that at all. Um, now, part of the daily importance of Easter always being with us is tied to our baptism, right? Some of you might have been baptized when you were 10 or maybe 10 months old or 10 days old or maybe even 10 hours or 10 minutes old. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but, the, but the fact remains that you were baptized and because you were baptized, that means you were then 
brought into, swept into the very life of God. And included in the very life of God is Jesus Christ. And so uh, that's the connection the Bible makes with, with baptism. Baptism connects us both to Jesus' death and his resurrection. And if you want to read about that, you can look at uh, Romans chapter 6, for example. Um, that if we have been baptized, we have been crucified with him, but also raised to new life. And so our baptism is, is far from just a past moment in history. Kind of like Easter Sunday is more than just a past moment in history that we remember once a year. Um, so our baptism is deeply tied into the fact that we are a part of the redeemed people of God through the holy water and the promise of baptism. Uh, baptism is always with us because when we remember our baptism, we are remembering that we are sinners. And this is a hard fact for some, and some may even deny their baptism because of that. Uh, God doesn't deny us, but we can certainly deny him. And so baptism reveals to us that we are sinners, uh, but also that we are forgiven sinners. And, and baptism, the, the, the promise given to us in baptism is that you are forgiven. You are now covered in the waters of God. You are, you are given a new garment of faith. That's why we baptize children and, and have them clothed in white, to symbolic of that, that purity that we have received, that righteousness that we have received from God in Jesus Christ. And so our baptism is with us every day. Um, you can remind yourself that you are a baptized child of God as you're I don't know, brushing your teeth and you take the water and, and mark your forehead to remind yourself that you are a baptized child of God, that you were dead in sin and that you uh, tend to still want to sin, uh, but God forgives you. He forgave you and he continues to forgive you and he loves you so very much. And he loves you so much that he gives you his son and he's given you with his son that eternal life, that eternal life that we call Easter, that entered into this world um, to show us a different and a better way. So baptism. Baptism is always with you. Easter is always with you. Therefore, Easter always when you remember your baptism. Um, again, it's Easter always because you are remembering that you were buried with Christ in baptism, but also raised up, resurrected, as it were. Um, a little foreshadowing of your own resurrection uh, when you were lifted up out of the font to be shown to the people of God as, as a baptized child of God. So that's why baptism is, is very important when we think about Easter always being with us. Um, but of course, we can't neglect that Easter always being with us is primarily being tied to the Lord's Day, um, Sunday or Saturday worship. We gather with God's people on Sunday morning, generally speaking. Here at Zion, we also gather on Saturday night. And it's in this gathered assembly where we remember that Jesus is risen. Not only do we remember that Jesus is risen, but we receive his gifts. Um, this is why Jesus was raised from the dead, after all. He was raised from the dead to, to pour out blessing upon blessing to God's people. When we read, for example, in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, Jesus comes to the disciples, and they are hiding. They're, they're fearful. Jesus has died. They, didn't, they don't know what happened to him. They're hiding in their, in their rooms of, with fear. And Jesus enters their, their, their house and shows them his hands uh, with the holes and everything. Um, and then proves to him that he is alive, that he is risen from the grave. And then he gives them his spirit. He, it's a really powerful image. He breathes on them and, and they receive the Holy Spirit, uh, encouraging them to forgive as God and Christ has forgiven them. And so Easter always is about living that forgiven life and, 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 and receiving all of God's gifts when he gives them to us, especially on the Lord's Day on Sunday. Now, can can any day be an Easter? Um, well, of course, because Easter is always with us. And so here at Zion, for example, we uh, really do have Easter always because we celebrate the Lord's Supper and we have worship every single day of the week, Monday through Friday, um, for our daily communion services at 1215, and also our weekend worship services on Saturday and Sunday, and also our dear brothers and sisters in Christ over at Bethany um, in Anua. And so we celebrate Easter all the time here at Zion because that is who we are as Christians. Now, what is at stake if we neglect or forget the fact that Easter is always a part of who we are? Um, if we neglect or forget that fact, 
then therefore we are really taking um, taking God's word in a way that is not serious. Uh, if we look, for example, at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, St. Paul writes that if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then our faith is futile and we are still in our sins. Uh, in, in a way saying, uh, your faith is useless. If Jesus is not risen from the dead, then your faith is totally and utterly useless. Uh, and so that's why we want to recapture, um, I, I want to help you confirmation students recapture the fact that Easter is always, always a part of who you are uh, through baptism and certainly through the gathering of God's people on, on Sunday. Now, some of you might be asking, well, pastor, we can't, you know, some of us aren't going to church because of health reasons and things like that. Can, can Easter still always be a part of us? Well, well absolutely. Um, because, again, Easter is, is not only something to be experienced with God's people, uh, but it's also, more, more importantly, something to be heard. And so we have the radio broadcast here at church, um, and also Bethany, we have a radio broadcast, because we want, we want as many people as possible to hear the good news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Um, he, it, it's not a myth. It's not a fable. It's not a tale that um, is a tall tale or a legend. Uh, this is the God honest truth of what happened in human, human history. And because Jesus is risen, therefore, we need to order our lives and, and think through life and, and our choices in a different way. Uh, because if Jesus is always with us, well then we need to be ordering our lives in light of that presence of God within, within us, that, that presence he has given to us. Um, now, what I want to do now is turn briefly to our questions. If you want to look at the question sheet here, um, some of these things I went over, um, but some of them, if I didn't, let me just kind of go through them. Um, question number one, briefly explain what is meant by the eighth day. We, we started off the video with that, and so just rewind and, and take a look at that again. Um, question number two, the basis for the eighth day is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Read 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 through 28. And share what's at stake if the resurrection of Jesus Christ never happened. We've touched on that as well. Um, question number three. We attend worship, the divine service, on the eighth day, Sunday, the day of the new creation. On this day, we receive the gifts of Christ. Can we receive the gifts of Christ on any day of the week? Well, we talked about that as well. Uh, and of course we can, because the day is made holy by the word of God. Number four. You were baptized and made inheritors of the new creation. Why is your baptism important for daily life? Well, we talked about that as well. So please take your time in answering that question because I re this question I really want you guys and gals to think through why your baptism matters, right? Remember, it's not just something that happened way back when in the past, but it's a part of who you are as a Christian. Your baptism matters continually, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. And what and uh, to, to show you that, I, I want to read a little bit for you from the, the small catechism um, where Luther has this to say about baptism. He writes, Baptism indicates that the old Adam or Eve in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires and that a new person should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. So baptism is always with us because sin is always with us, but also God is always with us in Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit. So um, have fun with that question. Really, you know, think through that question. How can your baptism remind you that it's Easter always? Uh, question number six. Why is it always important to have Easter on the brain? Why is it hard to always have Easter on the brain? Uh, again, really think through that question as well, uh, because we, we live in a world that does not want to believe that a dead man rose from the grave. Um, and so thinking about how Easter can always be on our brain is important in how we relate to other people, how we relate to our brothers and sisters, our parents, our grandparents, and so on and so forth. Um, having Easter on our brain means that we always have hope on our brains. We always have hope, we always have joy, and also we always have love in mind when we, when we interact with other people, um, talk with other people, and so on and so forth.
So really think about that question. A really good, uh, really something I'll be looking forward to reading from all of you. And, and thank you all, by the way, for turning in your questions in a timely manner. Um, and question number seven, how is Sunday and Easter Sunday? How is every Sunday and Easter Sunday? And we talked about that as well. So just kind of answer how, uh, you know, what, what marks the, um, the Sunday service, the Saturday service, uh, if your family went to that one, as, as an Easter Sunday. Uh, and keep in mind what we talked about yesterday, uh, excuse me, yesterday, uh, what we talked about last week uh, when we talked about the liturgy. Remember, the liturgy is all about God giving his gifts to us. Um, and once Jesus was resurrected from the grave, he gave gifts to the disciples. And in the gathering of God's people through the divine service, he continues to give gifts to us. Uh, and so really unpack that how um, Sunday or Saturday night uh, can be a day in which we remember Easter. Um, the great news that God has risen from the grave, that even though humanity didn't want God and tried to kill God and did indeed kill Jesus Christ, um, death could not stop God from coming back to forgive, to renew, um, to heal, and to show us that there is a better world waiting for the people of God. So uh, a lot more could be said about this, um, but uh, I'll just stop right there. As always, uh, thank you all for tuning in and, and, and listening. And if you have any questions in regards to the confirmation, confirmation questions this week or, or the previous weeks, uh, please let me know. So God's peace be with you. And God's blessings on your studies and all that God has in store for you this week and, and always, because it's Easter always. Take care.